The old story will never grow old How Jesus died to save my soul Oh no, the old story will never grow old That story will never grow old No, that story will never grow old Daniel chapter number 3, we're going to continue to study what we did this morning And we saw that... uh, the three Hebrew young men were thrown into the fiery furnace bound. And uh, God's people can expect to be persecuted. Don't, t- don't let this thing take you by surprise if nobody likes you as far as the world goes. <laughs> I wouldn't even be surprised if God's own people didn't like you sometimes. Amen? Amen. You know, there is such a thing in, in local assemblies... Uh, we, we talk about fellowship. Can I, can I just talk to you for a second? Uh, we talk about fellowship in the house of God. That's good. We ought to have fellowship. But sometimes there's a fellowship that's strained. You just kind of, you just kind of got to act like you're a Christian sometimes <laughs> with, with some people. But you know what? There's people in your own immediate family like that. So we're, we're a family of God. And you know what? When we get to heaven, we're going to get straightened out. In the meantime, we got a book that straightens us out if we just follow it. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray before we get in trouble. And uh, (laughs) and we're going to study Daniel a little bit. Father, again, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. Thank you for a place called heaven. Thank you, Lord, for the promise you said that you would go prepare a place for us. You did go. Lord, we know now because that you promised it, you are preparing a place for us. Father, we look forward to seeing our loved ones once again. We look forward to having fellowship with them. We look forward just to, when we get there, just to give them a big hug. But most of all, we look forward to seeing you that died on the cross for our sins. We ask, dear God, that you'll help us. I pray, Heavenly Father, we just, just willingly yield ourselves to thee to be used of thee tonight as preachers, and as listeners, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we saw that they had been thrown into the furnace. That's the place where they were. That's the place where uh, many of God's people is, spiritually speaking. We're in the furnace. We, don't, we expect men to, uh, um, to not treat us like we like to be treated sometimes. Well, we know what the world does, right? And so we saw that men ignited this fire. We saw that Satan intensified it. And we see sometimes that God allows it. God allows us to get in that fire. He did Job. He did Paul. He did many uh, of his dear children. And he does that same thing today. God doesn't put us in the fire or allow us to go into the fire uh, to make us bitter, but to make us better. And that's what God's fires always does. The fear of man bringeth a snare, the Bible says. Well, they lost their bonds and then they gained a blessing. Which this brings us down to number three now. I, I gave you the first two things. This morning I'll give you the last three tonight. Um, look at verse number 25. Verse 25 says, He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking. I like those two words. Loose and walking. In the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Um, the Bible says that they... They walked. That, that's, that was the pace that they kept. Uh, now, I don't know how big this furnace was. The Bible doesn't tell us. I don't even know what the furnace was used for, to be honest with you. I can't find any scriptures where it said, you know, we can go back to history and what Josephus said and all this. And we don't know too much about that furnace, but it had to be big enough for four men to be walking around in it. And uh, what, what they used it for, I have no idea. But uh, it was used that day. It was used that day to try to destroy three men who stood for God. Amen. And so, of course, there was that fourth one in the fire. Now, walking. The Bible says they were loose. 
they were loose. Remember when Jesus came to the grave of Lazarus in John chapter number 11? And uh, he called Lazarus out. And the Bible says that Lazarus came out. But he was bound hand and foot. And uh, I always said this. I, I can just see that picture of Lazarus coming forth. You say, how did he come forth if he was bound hand and foot? Well, he came out the same way we're going to go up. By the power of God. Now look, he's bound, Lazarus is bound, hand and foot, grave clothes on. Uh, probably has that napkin around his head. I'm just telling you, he just floated out. <laughs> you said, preacher, you really believe that? Look at me. I really believe that. <laughs> I don't believe there's nothing too hard for God. Now, don't y'all believe that? Well, let me ask you this. Do you believe that Jesus is going to rapture you up to heaven? So I believe that with all my heart. And so, and, and then what did, he, what did he tell them? What did Jesus tell those, uh, the, you know, the, the people watching him the, and Mary and Martha? What did, they, what did he tell them? Loose him and let him go. And so we have two words here. Essentially it says the same thing. Loose and walking. Let him go. Walking. They're walking in the midst of the fire. Now notice, walking shows liberty. Walking shows liberty. By the way, you know our liberties are slowly being eroded, yeah. being taken away from us. Pretty soon we're going to be told uh, when we can gather. Well, we're already told that. Yeah. How many can gather. We're going to be told what day we can gather. And uh, it's coming, folks. It's coming. I'm just telling you, uh, you, you watch out for it. Amen. Yeah. But we're not going to bow. Those three Hebrew children said, we're not going to bow, we're not going to bend, we're not going to burn. And uh, so you look forward, uh, I don't look forward to it, but I'm just saying that we need to walk in the liberty where Christ has made us free. They're not standing, they're not sitting, they're not crawling, they're walking. And by the way, you say, what does that signify? It don't signify a thing. They were walking. Y'all know what walking means, right? They were walking with real, honest, to goodness footsteps. Walking in the midst of of that fire right in the middle of it didn't say they were on the outside of it didn't say they were around the walls of it they said right in the middle of that thing they were walking well walking is a let me, let me just tell you this walking is the Christian's general pace now the Bible tells us in Hebrews that we are to run the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith but the general pace of the Christian is to walk. Do you, know, do you know that I have been guilty, maybe you have, been guilty of running ahead of the Lord? You ever been guilty of that? You ever been guilty when God says, now I want you to wait, but you can't wait. Because, look, if you're like me, I don't have too much patience anymore. I thought I had, I thought as a preacher, I thought as long as I've been preaching, I ought to have more patience. I'm finding myself having less patience. <laughs> Wonder why. Well, the Bible tells us that uh, we are to pray for patience. But you know what God sends us when we do that? Tribulation. Tribulation. It worketh patience, doesn't it? And so, and so uh, walking, that is the Christian's general pace. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God and was not for God took him. And so, not only does walking show liberty, but walking shows life, and it shows strength. Uh, can't you see those fellows? One, one preacher said this, and I, you know, you know how preachers exaggerate sometimes, don't you? <laughs> they, they said, boy, can't you see those three young men in the furnace? They're walking, and he said, they're probably cold. They're probably doing like this, Ooh, trying, to get, trying to keep warm and everything. Now, I don't know if that happened or not, but I know one thing. They were walking with the Lord. And uh, there, there had to be a calmness about them. There had to be a peace about them, a holy calm and a holy peace. And it, it was though they were walking in a beautiful garden somewhere. Now think about it, inside of a furnace, there's nothing attractive about that, is there? But I'm telling you, wherever God is and wherever he's with you, that's the most beautiful place that you can be. It really is. You said, I... I don't like in this hospital. I don't like being in this hospital bed. I don't like being in this nursing home. I don't like being bound up. I don't like being confined. I'm telling you, if Jesus is there, and by the way, he is, if you're saved, that's the most beautiful place you can be. It's the way you think. Amen? The way you think. 
as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. Well, the place where they were, that was a furnace. And the part that they lost, that was their bonds. And then we had the pace that they kept. But then I want you to look at the possessions that they did not lose. Now, they lost their bonds, right? Remember that? They lost their bonds, but there was something they did not lose in verse number 25. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now, first of all, their bodies were not hurt. Their bodies were not hurt. Now, that's a miracle, isn't it? Being in that fire, and their bodies were not hurt. Let me just say this. Do you know that when we die, we lose nothing worth keeping? You say, what about your loved ones? Well, you know what? If I leave this old world tomorrow, and I hope I don't, I like to stay around for a little while. I know one day, I know my wife's going to be following me somewhere down the road. I know my family's going to be. I'm telling you, this is how important it is to get your family to Jesus. But because when you lose, uh, look, when, you lose when, you, when we die, we really lose nothing. As far as personally, we really lose nothing that's worth keeping. That's why Jesus is going to change our bodies. I don't want to keep this one, do you? Do you want to keep yours? Well, if you're about 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, you say, yeah, I like to keep mine. Uh, not... Just keep, just keep waiting for a little bit. They'll start, <laughs> pains will start coming. Aches will start coming. Brother Eddie used to tell me, he said, you know, he said, there's, there's, uh, there's pain that you have. And then he said, and then there's old Lord pain. You ever say that? So, now, I, I don't know if that's taking the name of the Lord in vain. I don't know, but sometimes we get out of bed and we say, oh, Lord. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Amen. <laughs> but there's pain, and then there's a little bit more intense pain. Well, look look this. You know, when you when you uh, go on to be with the Lord Jesus, you don't lose your spiritual life. You don't lose your We don't lose our spiritual graces when we're in the fire. They only get a little bit better if you let them. If you'll let them. You know, we are not, and I know we do. I complain more than anybody in here probably. But we ought not complain. When things happen, we ought to ask God. God, what are you trying to tell me? I hope you do that. I, look, I'm, I'm sure you're a better, better Christian than I am. <laughs> so, I'm just saying that sometimes we just get all flustered, don't we? When things happen and, and uh, we get mad. And, and we get all out of sorts. Instead of asking God, God, what are you trying to tell me? Well, they, their bodies were not hurt. And then they didn't lose their garments either. They didn't lose their clothing. Do you know that we wear the righteousness of Jesus Christ all the time? All the time. And you know something? It's not going to be hurt by age. It's not going to be ruined by moth. It's not going to be, what, worms can't devour it. And I'm telling you, mildew doesn't ruin it. And bless the Lord, fire's not going to touch it either. And so here they are. They lost their bonds, but they never lost their clothing. And they never lost their bodies, were not hurt. Look what it says here in verse number 25. Look at it very carefully. I like the wording here. Middle of that verse says, they have no hurt. It does not say they did not hurt. It says they have none. You have no hurt. Can anybody in here say that? Right now, I have no hurt. Maybe some of these young people can. But I can't say that. You can't say that. Really. <laughs> but thank God, the Bible says they, they have no hurt. They didn't lose their body. They didn't lose their person, I would say. They didn't lose their garments. They never lost a grain of their treasure. They had meat that Nebuchadnezzar knew nothing about. And so when they, were, when they were walking around, Nebuchadnezzar, no doubt he had to look in there and see what was going on. Can you imagine? He probably thought they should have died by now. In fact, the ones that threw him in died on the spot. They fell down. The Bible says bound. They got up and started walking around. And whoever it was, maybe it was Nebuchadnezzar himself, saw it first. 
He said, didn't we? <laughs> Look, he says, he came near the verse 26. He said, he came near to the mouth of the burning first and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High, come forth and come hither. Well, they came forth, but in verse number 24, he was astonished or astonished, rose up in haste and spake, said to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? He had to take a look at that. And then he recognized, or he, he recognized, according to the scripture, the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now, I mentioned this this morning. I wonder how he knew what the form of the Son of God looked like. Well, when Moses went up to the Mount, Mount Sinai, God got his attention by a burning bush. That bush burned, but it was not consumed. And you know what? He recognized that the voice came out of that bush was God. God spake to him. And, and, and so Nebuchadnezzar uh, looked in there and he saw, <clears throat> he saw the fourth being the form of the Son of God. They had, they had meat that Nebuchadnezzar knew not of. There was, a, there was a preacher, wasn't a Baptist preacher, but there was a preacher back in days, back in the past, uh, somewhere around 80, 30, uh, 347, who lived to be 407, Chris, Christendom. I don't know if you ever heard of him. I bet you Eunice has heard of him. Chrysodom. His name means golden mouth. That was, his, that was his name. And he was threatened by the empress to banishment from his country. And he said, you can't do that. He said, my country's in heaven. And so she said, she said, well, we'll just take away your belongings. We'll take away your goods. And he says, no, you can't do that either for I'm a poor minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then I have no goods. All I have is him. And so she said, well, we're going to take your liberty. And he said, you can't do that either. He said, for iron bars cannot contain a free spirit. And then she said, well, we'll just take your life. And he said, now you can do that, but you cannot take away from me eternal life in Jesus Christ. So she had to let him go. What do you do with a fellow like that? By the way, you can't, you know, the devil, the devil cannot touch us if God doesn't want us touched. Amen? Can't do that. He was allowed to touch Job. He was allowed to touch Job. But uh, thank God we have life in Jesus Christ. Well, the Bible says they have no hurt. Now, I want you to look at another thing here. Here's the last thing I want you to see. I, can't, I couldn't wait to get to this. Verse 24, Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, rose up in haste, I read that, and spake, said to his counselors, did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto him, true, O king. He answered and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. They have no hurt. The form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now, the presence they had in that furnace, the presence they had in that furnace, I said this strangely that Nebuchadnezzar recognized him. Moses saw him in the burning bush. Joshua saw him with a sword drawn. Um, the soldier recognized, look, the soldier recognized Jesus on the cross. You remember what he said? After he, look, he saw Jesus. Every single aspect of Christ on that cross, that Roman soldier saw it. He saw Jesus being offered that uh, uh, vinegar. That wine, the vinegar mixed with myrrh, and so he, he saw all that. He, he heard Jesus cry out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He saw Jesus address the thief on his side. Uh, he, 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 he heard him cry out, Father, he said, into, my, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He heard all these things, and he died. And this Roman soldier, he saw the earthquake, he saw the darkness, he saw all of this. And he said, truly, this was the Son of God. I'm just going to tell you, this world is not going to recognize God unless they recognize it through God's children. Now think about that for just a second. Well, doesn't that put something on us? Doesn't that put a great big burden on us? We ought to be living for Jesus. I'm telling you, even more than we ever had before. Because you know what? They're not going to our churches and they're not reading the Bible and they're not, most of them are tearing up our gospel tracts that we give to them and they're not listening to us witness, but I tell you what they are doing. They're watching you. They're watching you. 
And they're going to see how you react when you get thrown into the fire. And boy, God help us to be closer and closer and closer to Jesus when the trials come. Do we blame God? Do we blame the government? Do we blame the world? How are we going to react? The world's waiting to see. And boy, they just can't look. Our, our news media, they can't wait for a preacher to fall. They can't wait for a Christian to get, uh, go bad. They just can't wait. Boy, you talking about making news and making it fast. That'll do it. But you let some politician go bad and they just, well, we don't care. I'm just telling you the presence they had in that furnace. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Look at something else. Do you know that you must go into the furnace if you're going to have the nearest and the dearest dealings with Jesus? If you want to get close, sometimes it's going to have to be in the furnace. Now, not only was Jesus, the, the form of the uh, Son of God, strangely recognizable, but I want, to, I want to kind of flip the coin a little bit and give you something here. I want to give you a sinner's regret. What do you mean by that? Well, think of what, what it must to, well, think of what it is to be cast into the furnace without Christ in that furnace. Is that going to happen? Yeah, it is. It is. Hebrews 12, 29 says, Our God is a consuming fire. Now, what does that mean, preacher? Does that mean that sinners are going to burn up and be no more? No, it doesn't mean that. It means their life will be lost, but their existence will go on forever and ever and ever. Let's turn to Revelation 20. Revelation 20. There's, there's cults out there. There's people out there who believe that, well, if, if, you know, if I die without Jesus, I'm just going to burn up and it'll be the end. No, it's not going to be the end. You better read Luke 16. You said Luke's a parable. No, it isn't. Luke 16 is not a parable. Jesus never used proper names in parables. Never. Revelation chapter 20, verse number 15. The Bible says, well, let's go, let's look, go to verse number 11. And I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This second death is one in which sinners lose their life. They, but they never lose their existence. They'll be there forever and ever and ever in that lake, not a furnace, but a lake which burneth with fire forever and ever and ever. Guess what? I'm not going to be in that lake. If you're saved, you're not going to be there. Your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life if you're saved. And it'll never be blotted out. Thank God for Calvary. So when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was cast into that fire. They lost some things. They lost their bonds. They lost the fear of man. And they lost the desire to please man. Can you imagine seeing them and talking to them after this whole thing was over? Now, I like to imagine that. Can you imagine Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego meeting some of the officials of the government? By the way, it was the government threw them in there. Right? It was the government that was going to punish them for standing up for God. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. So can you imagine Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being threatened again? Look, I, I don't know who, who would be the leader. Probably Shadrach since he's mentioned first. But can you imagine him saying, look, look, guys. <laughs> We just went through a fiery furnace with Jesus. Anything else you may do, not going to, we don't care. Not going to hurt us. Thank God. The Bible tells us that we're not to fear those who could destroy this body, but rather fear him who's able to destroy both body and soul in hell. 
And if that's not going to happen with me, how about you? Not going to happen with you. Amen. I hope not. Look, I hope everyone in here is saved tonight. I hope every single one of you is saved. But if not, you can trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior tonight. You can receive him by faith. You say, preacher, is it that easy? I, I'm going to say it's, it's that good. It's that good. You don't have to try to prove yourself. God knows all about you. You don't have to try to say, you know what, I would get saved, but I got to do this and that, and I got to get rid of this, and I got to start doing that. He said, just as I am. That's what the song we sing. They sing. Just as you are, God wants you that way. And look, when you're thrown into that fire, fire that furnace spiritually, I want, you to know, I want you to remember this, that Jesus Christ walks with you. He promised he would. Amen. Amen. Father, we ask your God that you'll help us to remember that man intends for that furnace to be hurtful and harmful and to destroy us. But Lord, in the midst of that furnace that we just read about was the form of the Son of God. Thank you, dear Jesus, for being there with us. It's amazing that after they came out, we don't read anywhere in the Bible that you came out. And I don't know really what that means, but maybe it means that you're going to still be there if somebody else is cast into the furnace. So I want to thank you, Lord, that you're with us no matter what happens. Your sickness, struggling, financial reversals, even death, Lord. You said you'd walk through, with us through the valley of the shadow of death so that we would not fear any evil. You're with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Father, we ask, dear God, that if there's one here tonight that needs Christ as their Savior, I pray that the Holy Ghost of God will convict them of their sin, their need for Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.